last few moments, ladies and gentlemen, before the off of the Boyle Sports and Irish Greater Derby. The runners parading led by our red jacketed runner, well met, owned by John Jones, this brilliant son of Ballymac Best in Port of Flames. Tremendous early speed, ideally housed on the fence. Next in blue, the other Kobe, a brother to the 2022 Derby winner, Born Warrior. Bidding to get Jennifer O'Donnell, a second Derby success in two years, owned by Brian Clare, David Lestrange, and Aidan Walsh. He is a worthy favourite. Next in trap three, Ben's Teddy, the powerhouse, trained by Pat Buckley and owned by Kim Richard, Nolan and Willem Byrne and uh, Spike Murphy. This is a powerful son of Drippy City and Beach Grove Bell. None will be finishing faster. And if he is in contention at the third bend, well, watch out. Four is 365, a fairy tale story, owned by the Pints of High No Syndicate. I think you can hear them down there. Trained by Scott Phelan, he only has his license just over a year. A daughter, Drippy Sydney, and Dunn Quinana. She is a really versatile type. She is tremendous pace, and she is an outsider, but you can certainly figure. Five is Bocco's Crystal, bidding to give Graham Holland a record equaling fourth Irish Derby success. Owned by Bev Lockheed, this daughter, Drippy Sydney, and vigorous Hillary, is bidding to give her own. The second derby success following Lenz and Bocco back in 2019. It is the Trap 5 runner, Bocco's Crystal. And completing the lineup in the stripes, music glide away, bidding to give Pat Gilfoyle a second derby champion after good news back in 2017. Owned by the Pension Plan Syndicate, this son of Newin Taylor and Glideaway Magic has found his trapping boots of late. He's flown to the corner, and if he does tonight, he could play a huge part. A wonderful final to the Boyle Sports Irish Graham Derby. They're on the way to traps. Yes, indeed, the Derby roar is earlier than normal. Maybe they went too early. The very best of luck to all involved, to owners, trainers, breeders, anyone that's had a, a share or a connection with any of these six greyhounds. Here it is, the Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby Decider for 2023. The hair in motion, the runners in one, well met, two, the other Kobe, three, Ben's Teddy, four, three, six, five, in five, Bottles Crystal, and six, Music Glideaway. Away they go and a good start by two. The other Kobe leads to the bend. Bocco's Crystal and Music Glide away. Well met, Ben's Teddy in 365. But on the bend, and Kobe leads into the back straight. Bocco's Crystal second. Then comes one well met, and Ben's Teddy is starting to make his move. But it's the other Kobe. His brother won it 12 months ago. Born Warrior. He leads by two. Bocco's Crystal closes the gap. But the other Kobe leads to the line. And the other Kobe wins the down. Little Brothers, year after year, Born Warrior last year, the other Kobe this year. Well done to Jennifer O'Donnell. She has once again climbed the mountain to Brian Clare, David Lestrange and Aidan Walsh. They have won the derby with the other Kobe. He was purchased last year to win it. He fell out in the opening round and crashed out, but he's back 12 months later and he has won the Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby. The other Kobe in 29-11, that's how to win a derby. Yeah, I'm here with Jennifer O'Donnell. Jennifer, congratulations. Thank you very much. We knew that the Oracle we had the early pace and he showed just what he could do tonight. He showed what he could do. He was out and gone and was catch me if you can. Look, it was a super final. Every dog there was there on Merish and look, it's the place to be in front in the final. And two years in a row, never done before. Little brother, little brothers won in it two years in a row. Yeah, look, his brother's at home giving him a few pep words all week, so Look, it's just a dream come true because we've had these since they were babies. Yeah, congratulations, Jennifer. You'll you enjoy the celebrations tonight. It is a dream come true. I had a finalist in 1984, so it's a long way. But uh, this dog is just phenomenal dog. Yeah, just unbelievable dog. Uh, you know, you dream about it and you dream about it, but all the different things that go through your head before the race you know? but he did everything the way we taught me yeah and you had a dog in 1984 you're saying so it was yeah. a, a long wait yeah. but uh, worth it oh absolutely yeah i mean this is it, look the way that this dog came about and jennifer and you know it's just, just fantastic and he had lucky he was paw perfect tonight he couldn't have done anything better out and away yeah. the time says it all yeah 29 11 i thought it would be 29 30 would win it but 29 11 he had to, he had to do that to win it
Did you have a bit of a sweat when they were coming towards the line because did, they, they did, were picking her up, say, yeah, picking him up? I did, I did, yeah. Because he, he just about, you know, he doesn't really get to 550 in the you know, but he gets, gets it all right, 29-11. Uh, he gets so far away from him down the back, you know. There'll be plenty of celebrations tonight. Uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's that time of the night, it's that time of the year. And it's that time where we recognise a truly brilliant Derby champion. The other Colby came through the bars tonight, 29-11, the fastest Derby winner of all time. For the last time in this year's Derby, and for the last time as a Boyle Sports rep, I'm talking to Sarah Kinsler. You love the sport. I think everyone else here this evening loved the sport. And we were treated to a very special occasion, Sarah. We were, yeah. Um, look, the other Colby has been the favourite since the draw was made. He was a worthy favourite and now looking back it's easy with hindsight I know but I kept saying all week it's a wide open derby but when you look back at the result it really wasn't Ian um, it was very much so You were echoing the, the words that I said to a few people tonight whatever the result you'll go how did I not see that was going to happen Yeah. And, and that's what happens in this type of derby we, we said all week that Well Mess or the other Kobe or Bacchus Crystal, whatever took the flyer and got loose, would take the world to beating. Yes. It was the other Kobe. A dog who got loose in the quarterfinals. A dog who got loose in the semi finals. A dog who's emulating his brother, who got loose many times in last year's Derby yeah. final. And here we are, we are talking about the other Kobe. And as you say, hindsight's 2020. <laughs> yeah. um, did you back him tonight? I didn't have a bet. You see, hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Let's talk about the race itself. Big support for Ben Steady in the betting ring as we were expecting. He actually went off, well he's returned the industry SP favours okay. at 11 to 4 ahead of the other Kobe at 3 to 1. You know, speaking of that hindsight again, that 3 to 1 looks pretty generous now. The other Kobe, he couldn't have come through the bars any quicker. I know, um, but that's he needed to do that Ian because he's the type of dog that if he didn't get that electric start and I mean looking back and I remember saying it to you on talking dogs and stuff is he wasn't as consistent at the L sectionals as I would have liked but I mean it didn't matter it really doesn't matter and you learn something new every year and I'm sure you, you're doing this a lot longer than I no, am No, no, I know it all Yeah, 25 years and uh, <laughs> you can see these things and you learn from every single year you go well I, I misjudged that or I got that wrong Greyhounds surprise you all the time this industry just keeps throwing up things and, and good things because what Jennifer O'Donnell has achieved I'm sure Jennifer if you're if you're ever going to watch this this isn't going to sink in for a while I don't think she even realizes sure what she's sunk in yet. Never mind probably this year. not yeah like uh, watching her with her mammy like and it, I mean if, if if it doesn't bring a tear to your eye there's something wrong with you I was crying out there watching them I haven't even been in a derby final but I'm happy for them I'm happy for the industry I'm happy that it's on live TV and people all over the world are watching at this going, that could be me someday because everything good in life starts with a dream. And if, if you're a child watching Virgin Media 3 at home and you're going, I want to have a greyhound, it's very easy. You I thought can... you were saying, I want to be a greyhound. No, well, probably that as well. But it's very easy to get into. And tonight and the whole um, Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby, this tonight is a brilliant shop window for what we can offer, what we have. We're very, very lucky to have it. But Jennifer O'Donnell, take a bow. I, I know it's the Greyhound who wins the Derby, don't get me wrong. And the other Kobe is a stunning Greyhound, a stunning winner. At 29-11, the fastest ever Derby winner. What a, what a way to do it, Ian, in such superior fashion. But Jennifer O'Donnell, I mean, the woman... What did you say earlier on on commentary? She's the woman of the moment, or the woman of Shelburne Park, the queen of Shelburne Park, and she really is. Yeah, she certainly was. Uh, it was great to see her mother, Frances, here. Frances trained a derby winner in 2012 with Skywalker Puma, her late father. The legendary Matt O'Donnell trained three derby champions, including one of my all-time favourites, if not my all-time favourite, Ardford Mick. I'm not sure you were even born when Ardford Mick Probably not, was no. running away with his derby success. He trained the likes of Farlow Melly to win English derby. Like, this is something that's, you know, it's not off the ground she licked it as they as they say in the, in the phrase she knows how to do a greyhound she is a supreme greyhound person john mitchell her her husband of only a short spell yeah. i keep saying to him he's I married well the, i think you're the lucky charm john <laughs> maybe you're the added extra you know you're the you're the derby keeper you're the man yeah, that brings yeah. the success but he always says to me he said like he just says there is nothing that just goes goes unchecked. Yes. They, the two of them, you know, Francis and Jennifer, like they are just wonderful, wonderful people with a greyhound. Yeah. And I think the results are showing that. They are, yeah. And look, the the 
the dedication and the love and affection and care that goes into them but you can't like you're constantly checking your dogs I mean for they can have these niggly little injuries or you're always bringing them to the vets that the bills to be colossal it's not that simple you don't just put them into the box and hope for the best and I think that needs to be more expressed to the greyhound people and, and people that are not into it as much of what actually happens in the kennels I mean they have to travel home yes they've won the derby but someone has to bring the dog home someone has to let the dogs out they have to be fed and they have to be let out in the morning and galloped and they started every, all every over again every sand gone from ears from eyes yes. from toes from everywhere you're going through their webs you're cleaning their feet you're disinfecting their feet when you go home because people don't want to bring any infections into their kennels nobody sees that nobody sees the hard work it's the same in, in all things the, in life this is 24-7 yes. this, this isn't a part time job no. this is 365 days a year Christmas day they're out looking tending to their dogs yeah. but apart from that these two pups were born in Jennifer's you know, yeah. in her kennel. She held like, them in are, her hands. These are, these are by Mount Taylor Queen, her own, you know, yeah. her own brood. To breed two Derby winners in a row is, you know, you know, pretty, pretty remarkable. <laughs> yeah. But then to also train them, uh, your husband Owen part or part own one of them. Yeah. It's just an unbelievable story. Uh, Twenty nine eleven tonight, away and gone. He is a dog where you know five fifty is most certainly as far as he wants to yes, go I agree. but I don't think as well as Bach goes Chris Loran in defeat we're going to get to her in a moment mm. I don't think at any point he looked like he was going to be beaten no and it's easy look look I was in the middle of the track watching it and as you know it's hard to see anything out there and I haven't even seen the replay yet but when I seen him in front I said that's it he won't be passed and I, if anything I would have thought the likes of maybe Ben's Teddy or 365 or, or Ben Teddy did make away, a move into the third bend and you thought well maybe yeah. But then he was forced to check his stride at that point and, and that ended his chances. Yes. And it was left up to Bacco's Crystal. She's beaten a half length. Yeah. A big 17 oh, weeks out of season. Isn't it? Yeah. And like the other Kobe's after taking the flyer of all flyers. Like if you're going down the road at Bacco's Crystal, you are both delighted yeah. and you're you're rueful of just that missed opportunity. Yeah, and it's literally when you the agony is a is a half a length. That's literally what it is. That agony of you're so, so close. You know, but that like, look, she owes them nothing. She's been a terrific bitch for them. They all have, all the finalists have been brilliant. But the other Kobe, as I say, in hindsight, looking back now, I mean, he was the favourite for a reason. He really was. Are you familiar and with the term after timing, are you? <laughs> I'm a brutal after timer. You know, like when you're in the pub with the lads and they'll come in and say, oh, I backed a 33 to one winner. Oh, did you? But you never told us after timer. No, thankfully, I'm not one of those people. Uh, maybe you probably are. But um, no, but you know I'm, what? I've had me moments. Yeah, I'd say so. Are you going out tonight? I will have a few. Uh, it's definitely <laughs> a night where I feel I think we deserve it. It's been yeah. a long, long derby. But, you know, on a night like tonight, it, it's a long haul. You yeah. know, 12 races. And each and every race is so emotional. We've seen some exceptional performances on the undercard. Uh, yeah. I want to get back to the derby itself, though. I'm just after coming down from the Boyle Sports Suite. Mm. I was asked to come in because Brian Clare, David Lestrange and um, Aidan Walsh appeared. And they said, would you take a few minutes to interview them in front of the oh, crowd? Brilliant, yeah. And the three of them were buoyant, but Brian in particular. The dog was bought with Brian in mind. Mm. You know, Brian has been coming to the dogs for years and years and years. He's had some, you know, okay dogs, some good graders, and he had a dog actually ran in the opening round of a derby at one point. Yeah. But this dog was bought last year on the recommendation of Teddy Hegarty. After the race, Teddy said to them, do you want me to pick you another one? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the. I think that's some of the greatest opportunistic thinking yes, of all time. Yes, yes, that is. Oh, look, it's, it's terrific. But like, look, you hear of all these stories, so like, I didn't even know he was connected to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it was hush, hush, or maybe I just didn't pick up on it or something. I don't bloody know, but... There's so many different stories attached to these dogs and the derby and stuff. And you, it, it, as the derby progresses, it's like your 365 story with the lads and the big gamble. It's only when you're here, and obviously you're in a brilliant position as well because you're writing about it every day and you'll be ringing every fella from Tom, Dick to Harry getting information. But I love as the derby unfolds, you get all these great stories. But that was a brilliant thing to do that up in the suite. I'm, I'm sad I missed it now. <laughs> oh, I'm sure not, they recorded it. You're not with it. Sports anymore. You'd probably be stopped no, at the yeah, door. I've been, I've been kicked out now, yeah. <laughs> Sarah, a memorable derby from start to finish. We've seen the big names crashing out here, there and everywhere. But yes, we had a wonderful derby final. A tremendously competitive derby final to look forward to that ended up being uh, basically a two-dog affair with Ben's Teddy trying to sneak in at the finish. Mm. It was a fitting finale. 29-11, the fastest derby winner in history as you alluded to yeah 
It's been a wonderful derby. We've seen a tremendous derby champion in the other Kobe, emulating his brother Born Warrior from 12 years ago or from 12 months ago. It has never been achieved before. It may places. never be achieved again. <laughs> but I can promise you, tonight will be all about the other Kobe. Born Warrior may get a mention, but we will always remember the other Kobe for his stunning, stunning derby success tonight. And that is something worth remembering. Congratulations to General O'Donnell, to Brian Clare, David Lestrange, and Aidan Walsh. Roll on 2024.